All of us strangers are starting to make the waves now that's getting a wider release, and with more eyes on this bizarre film, many people are walking away scratching their heads. That's because All of Us Strangers is a surreal indie drama that doesn't quite tell you exactly what is happening. I have a few theories about what this movie is saying and how it's saying it. So why don't we just get right into it? Spoilers ahead. All of Us Strangers is about a screenwriter named Adam living alone in a newly built building with very few residents. Adam is supposed to be writing a new script about his dead parents who died when he was 12, but instead decides to lay on the couch and watch TV. Then one night he gets a knock on his apartment door and on the other side is Harry, a drunk neighbor who is looking to get laid. Adam refuses Harry's advancements and shuts the door. In order to write about his parents, Adam decides to ride a train to his childhood village just outside of London. He visits his childhood home and to his surprise, he finds his parents alive and well at the same age they were when they died. Adam's parents invite Adam into the house where they get to catch up on Adam's life since they died when he was 12. The rest of the film is about Adam revisiting his childhood home, reconnecting with his dead parents, while also maintaining a new relationship with Harry, the drunk guy who knocked on his door. So what is actually happening in this movie? Well, I can think of three main theories about the movie. The first is that everything we see in this movie is actually happening. In other words, the film is literal. Adam is literally seeing his parents at his childhood home and having real conversations with them. This is a fun take because it turns the film into a fantasy drama about grief. It's not very often we get a marriage of fantasy and indie drama. I enjoy this interpretation of the film because it doesn't require much hoops to jump through. If you accept that this is all happening, then you can just sit back and enjoy this emotional drama. However, if you don't think any of this is happening, you spend a lot of its runtime trying to figure it out, which is exactly what I did. Theory number two, which I believe is the theory my girlfriend is subscribing to, is that everyone in this film is dead. The reasons this could be are as follows. The building that Adam and Harry live in is almost completely empty. In fact, it actually might just be the two of them who live there, and Harry always talks about how quiet it is there. It's as if this building is some sort of afterlife where they don't know they're dead, or like a purgatory type of situation. The next reason is that throughout the film, Adam has many coughing fits, suggesting that he is sick, and this little character trait is never explained or explored, which could further indicate that Adam is actually dead. And the last reason is the obvious one, because, well, Adam can see and speak to his deceased parents, and I feel like you gotta be pretty dead in order to do that. So that's theory number two, that Harry and Adam and everyone in this movie are dead. Then there's the last theory, which is the theory that I subscribe to. I believe that everything that happens in the first 10 to 15 minutes are real. In fact, everything that takes place before Adam sees his dad in the park really happened. All the events that take place after Adam follows his dad in the park never happened. All of the times he goes home to talk to his parents, never happened. His new relationship with Harry, never happened. I believe 90% of this film is just in Adam's head. Adam is trying to finally accept and grieve the death of his parents, and he does so by opening a box with some of his childhood toys and objects, many of which we see again later in the film. Objects such as a diner menu, which is where they go towards the end of the film, or the tree angel for the Christmas tree where we see it again in the middle of the movie. I think this movie is legit just Adam looking at these objects and remembering his parents while also having conversations with them. And I know that last part sounds kind of weird, but it totally happens. I lost a parent when I was in my early 20s, and there have been numerous times where I've had conversations with them in my head. Again, I know that sounds super weird, but trust me, it happens. Then there's Harry. I believe that the first time they met, when Harry shows up drunk, is the first and last time they ever saw each other. I don't believe they ever carried on a relationship. I think Adam shut the door that night and then fantasized about being with Harry for the rest of the film. And it isn't until after he is able to come to terms with his parents' death that he decides to go back to Harry and try to let him into his life. He's now ready for a partner. However, Adam finds Harry dead, wearing the same clothes he was wearing when he knocked on Adam's door that night. So that is how I interpreted the movie, that the first 10 to 15 minutes really happened, but the rest is just a manifestation of what's in Adam's head. I thought this movie was pretty great, and I definitely recommend you guys check it out. It's got killer performances from Andrew Scott, Paul Mescal, Claire Foy, and Jamie Bell. This is one of those movies that can be interpreted in different ways, and I love that. And even with all that, regardless whether you think the events happen or not, at the movie's core, it's a film about grief. And how do you process grief? Sometimes we forget and move on, but it's only until we sit down and grasp what loss is we can finally free ourselves from the shackles of pain. And I think this movie was brilliant in how it captured that. Please check this one out. I think you'll enjoy it.
Thanks for watching.